Welcome to this service at Faith and Victory Church. This is the place to come to receive your miracle from God. Now, let's join our service already in progress. And they just start holding and start saying the name of Jesus. And they said, after, and they get to singing Jesus. I, I, Gaithers hadn't written a song by them, so whatever, however the tune they kind of picked up to sing it with. And the first one calmed down, they'd quit. They kind of, you know, kind of mosey out of the bedroom. And then they come back and start up again. And they went back in there, they do the same thing, and they begin to sing about the Jesus. They start saying the name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. The name of Jesus. Why? Because there's no other name under heaven whereby men must be saved. That's healed, made whole, delivered, salvation. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. And every tongue confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Of, now, King James uses the word things. That's italicized in the Greek. Of heaven and earth and hell. That really is literally talking about beings. Every being in heaven, every being in earth, and every being in hell must bow to the name of Jesus. Demonic forces of darkness must bow to the name. The, the enemy that comes to afflict and that comes to to bring into captivity and bondage, must bow their knee to the name. So what do I do? What do I do? When I've been prayed for and I'm believing God and things we can't try to manifest, we just start saying, oh, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Jesus, hallelujah. Demons tremble at the sound of that name. The forces of darkness are abated at the sound of that name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Because it is the name of the covenant. Glory to God. It is the name that brings salvation. You'll go on to all the earth. We'll start teaching on authority soon. And in my name, and in my name, you'll lay hands on the sick and they'll recover. You'll cast out devils or exercise authority over demons. If you drink any of the other thing, it shall not harm you. You'll take up serpents. Now, we don't, go, we don't have snake handling services. But if you get accidentally bit, you can claim immunity in Jesus' name. So what do we do? We just stop and say, thank you, Jesus. Does it have to be perfect? No, because he knows when you're, when you're telling you, thank you, Jesus, I'm healed. Thank you, Jesus, you're the master. Speak the name of freedom and deliverance. In Jesus' name. Amen? Hallelujah. Greet someone and say, it's good to see you. Well, if it ain't good to see them, say it by faith. <laughs> they just did to you, so it's just getting mutual faith going on here. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. So you start speaking that name, and there's something holy and something awesome that just manifests in our presence. Let's just say it, Jesus. Jesus, come on, I just I love this. Jesus, there's just something, yes, there is, about that name. Master, my Savior, come on now, oh my Jesus, that the fragrance, isn't that how precious his name is, how sweet his name is, the rain. Jesus, oh, you're my Jesus. Jesus, you're my Jesus, oh, oh heaven and earth proclaim. Kings and kingdom, yes, will all 
pass away. Yes, there is. Say this. But there's something about there's something holy, there's something precious, there's something powerful about that name. Hallelujah. That is above every name. Glory to God. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to um, we're going to have my wife come. It's, it's back to school Sunday, so we're going to be praying for all of our back to school kids. Hallelujah. Amen. And uh, what did you want to say? We're going to pray for our back to school kids. Okay. So all everybody's going back to school. Come on. Up here. And that's high school, that's college, that's elementary, that's middle. All right, hallelujah. Look my way. All right. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. We like to, we like to bless the kids. Now, we, now look, you youth are kids too, so. If you don't know, I know that. Look at my son. He's like over there. Did you really throw me under the bus? No, I didn't. Hallelujah. All right. Father, we pray. We pray life. We pray that this will be the best school year that every one of these young people have ever had. Pray that they'll, they'll learn more than they've ever learned. We pray that they, they won't run into the problems of, a, of a, the fear of not succeeding. We think that they're, they're, they're bold and confident that they can and will learn that they will, they will supersede any expectations they've ever had before in the name of Jesus. So we lay our hands on them in the name of Jesus, and we thank you that you bless them with wisdom and understanding and knowledge, hallelujah, and the capacity to learn and to hear and, and implement the things that they receive in the classroom in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Glory be to God. We thank you, dear Father. We thank you. We thank you that this works in them now and works for them through the entire school year. How do they, even their teachers will be astounded at how fast and how quickly they've, they've learned and how much they've progressed over what they've ever had in the past in the name of Jesus. We thank you for it and we decree it and say that they are well learned and have a great year in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord, we pray for every parent. Every parent that's got a... Uh, work with their children and guide them. We thank you that they have wisdom that they never had before. Thank you they have understanding that they never had before. And thank you they'll function, oper operate properly. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, all right, praise the Lord. Don't forget uh, today at, um, well, I guess they're meeting a little bit before five, but at five o'clock the youth group is going to see Ben-Hur. If, if you haven't gotten involved in that, contact Jessica or, Je or Cap. It's going to be $10 a person to go. Um, it is a very, uh, I went and saw it, so it's been pastor approved. Hallelujah. Uh, it has done really well, uh, although I'm still partial to the Charlton Heston version from 1959. Uh, this one is good, and it's shorter. I mean, if you all remember the Charlton Heston version, uh, it was uh, three and a half hours with an intermission and an entree act. Hallelujah. So you had to, you know, you had to sit there and listen. It had, What? This is more, more fast-paced. They leave out a lot of the back, back storyline as far as, uh, you know, spending this amount of time on this or that. that you know, they, they kind of cut that and streamline it. And uh, just more boom, 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 boom. Because they cut out an hour and a half of, of the storyline, so you've got to make it. But it's still good. It is really good. And, G, and Jesus is, is cool in this one. He's not the uh, shadow with the, with the choir music going, oh, Have you ever seen his, you see his face? Yeah, that's right. You see some of those old, old Hollywood movies where Jesus, you know, it's, it's a shadow of Jesus. You never see him. Yeah, there you go. Spooky. <laughs> Did you know Jesus wasn't spooky? <laughs> yeah, that's right. They show him as a carpenter, too. That's right. He wasn't out somewhere running around making clay pigeons and making them live and, you know, traveling in caravans somewhere like some people try to say. There's no biblical evidence of that either. Hallelujah. So, 4.30 at the, at the Red Cinema, which is on Battleground off of Wendover. It, it's the old Carousel Grand. The old Carousel Grand, okay? It was formerly the Carousel Grand. Now it's the Red Cinema. At, at, 
Every seat, every seat in the theater is a recliner. You don't want to go to a boring movie there. <laughs> Praise the Lord. All right, it's time to receive our Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you need an offering envelope, Brother Joe is in, Brother Benny's in the aisle right now. If you need to give with your square cash, you can go ahead and ring it up. Praise the Lord. Um, don't forget, Wednesday's my birthday. And uh, that was a joke. Janie's is Friday. I am not telling you how old she is. But she's two years and two days younger than me. So we always celebrate our birthdays on Thursday, uh, the day between. So we celebrate our birthdays on the 1st because hers is on the 2nd, mine's on the 31st. So we, uh, we celebrate. And then this past um, uh, Tuesday, my mom and stepdad were down in town. And so we gave him a surprise 90th birthday party. His birthday is the same day as mine. So uh, we surprised him with a, I mean, and he, and he's driving. I mean, yeah, I mean, alert. Only, it has a blog on the Internet. Uh, huh? Do what now? Yeah, what's the difference between 8 and Windows 8 and Windows 10? And, I mean, he's a, he's, he's, a, he's a character. Anyway, does Tai Chi. He goes to Tai Chi camp every year. Well, Bruce Lee, yeah. Bruce Lee said one time, Kung Fu is Kung Fu is no child's play. Okay, Bruce. Hallelujah. Y'all ready to give? You know, Jesus said give. And it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over. And then we'll give it to your bosom. Can you say amen? amen? Hallelujah. Oh, my goodness. My watch stopped. Hallelujah. It's going to be the shortest sermon I've ever preached. In the name of Jesus, we bless the people that tithe and give. Receive from heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. Go ahead, ushers, receive that. As soon as they finish receiving the offering and are at the back of the building, the children and the youth, or not children, not youth, Children can go to their classes. Hallelujah. Amen. Everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. All righty. All right. Guys, y'all can ask, get dismissed to go to your classes. The rest of you go ahead and open your Bibles to the 91st Psalm, which is where we were last week. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Listen, you know, um, so you, you haven't preached. You're not, I'm not going to be able to preach a whole lot today, but you know what? Um, I believe that the Holy Spirit has the right and the free reign to work as he desires. And if he wants to work in a certain way, we let him do that. He, pre he can preach a sermon by manifestation. Now, I, listen, I don't believe we can get together every time and never have any word preached. I don't believe that. I don't believe we can get together and have all, uh, all manifestations every service. It is a blending of the word and the spirit. Amen. That works in our lives. Hallelujah. But when the Spirit of God directs a service a certain way, and, and the way he did this morning, because the anointing manifest felt like electricity in my arms. <laughs> Hallelujah. When, when it manifests like that, I know I've been around long enough. I know you've got to work with the Holy Spirit. Because if you don't, he'll pack up and walk out on you. Amen. You go your way, he'll just leave you standing there in the dirt. Do you know that there are types? I may not get to my sermon. There are types and analogies in the Bible that we need to understand a little bit better. Now, remember that when the children of Israel were in the wilderness, the glory, the, the cloud by day and the pillar of fire by night. Now, why was that? Did you know there can be an up to a 60 degree difference, a temperature difference in the desert between night and day? It can be 120 for a high in the day and 60 at night for the low. Well, if you're used to that 120, 60 is cold. You don't believe it? Go outside at 90 and then the next morning get up and it's, and it's uh, 30. That's a, your body acclimates, okay? So God knew that, so he was a pillar of fire by day. I mean, by night, not by day. By night and a cloud by day. He, he, he kept the heat off them during the daytime and kept them warm at night. Amen? Amen. And what they would do, when the cloud stopped, they would set up camp. And that's where they stayed until the cloud moved again. And let me tell you, you got out of the tent and the cloud was moving, you better break down and go, uh, and like they used to say, cut beef or boogie and split. Because you're in trouble if you're not moving. you got to move with the cloud. That's the glory. That's God's leading. That's God's presence. And even in our church services, when, the, when God moves, when the cloud moves in a certain direction, so to speak, we have to move with it. Or we'll, we'll miss out on what God wants to do. We'll walk, right, we'll walk right out from under what he's wanting to do. Because we had a plan. 
You can plan on being, you know, and the, the children of Israel could plan on being somewhere in the next day, and God stopped. Well, you better stop because you're going to show up to the other place by yourself. You're going to be hot and cold. Amen. God kept it perfect temperature. Hallelujah. So we learn, we learn to move with the cloud. We learn to move with the glory. Or, New Testament terminology, we learn to be led by the Spirit. Amen. Those are analogies from the Old Testament that teach us how to be, how to, how to be led by the Spirit. Well, you know, in ministry, we've got to be led by the Spirit also. Amen. Not just because, just because you come with your sermon. I heard Dad Hagen say one time, he, he had gotten him notes together for a Mother's Day sermon. He said it was a stem winder. Now, some of you older people understand stem winders. You young folks may not know what I'm talking about. See, our watches used to be, every day, it's something you had to take it and wind the stem. Or, it, 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 you know, that's what wound up, that's what kept it running. Now, we got, dat, we got digital and battery-powered things, or solar-powered. People don't do that stuff anymore. They just... They, Oh, it's not, it's not working? Go put a new battery in it. Don't mess, don't think about it again. Well, we used to have to wind ours all the time. And so, you know, and uh, even they came up with the, the, the motion, the ones when you moved your arm, it wound it up and that kind of stuff. Well, brother, you know, if you had a stem winder, you, 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 you cranked it up. You got it going, all right? Because you, you, you're winding the stem of your watch. Well, he said, if I have a stem winder of a service. But see, we got to follow the glory. Amen. The Spirit of God knows what need is among the people. And he knows at what time. See, um, Karen came by this morning and said she wanted me to pray for her today. And, and I came in here, and then I said, if you saw me disappear, I went to the room and started praying in the Holy Ghost because I just sensed I needed to, I needed to get more, uh, into, you know, kind of forget my plan and, and get more in tune with what God wanted to do. Well, do you always, I always come wanting to do what God wants to do, but, you know, you have a plan. But I, I had a sense. See, that's why you've got to listen to the Spirit. Sometimes he won't, he won't move you that way. He moved you that way this morning. Amen. And as soon as they, and I didn't ask them to sing the glory here. I don't know why they decided to sing that this morning, but they just did. They didn't say, hey, we need, we need a glory song. Oh, well. I mean, it's okay if you do, but I, I didn't. And they got to singing that, and the anointing started running down my arms like electricity. I knew, I knew, because I was going to wait till the end of the service. See, we can always have our plans. And this, this, that's not just ministry. This is life. You can have your plans, and you need to listen and, and flow with God. When God moves the cloud, you got to go with the cloud. Why? There's a reason. Well, what's the reason? Sometimes you won't know. God don't always tell you everything. Oh, yes, no, he doesn't. Yes, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. Yes, he doesn't. No, he doesn't. We argue all day, and I, I got Bible. You give me a Bible that he always shows you everything. He said he will show us great and mighty things to come, but he don't always show you when you want to be shown. Now, he appeared to Abram and said, Get thee out of thy country, out of thy kindred, out of thy father's house, and go into a place that I will show thee. Abram had to take off without knowing where he was going, not knowing whether he went. He, he got shown on the way. Now, nobody, I know most people don't like getting in a car. You people get in a car with somebody and say, where are we going? Just ride. They don't want to just ride. They want to know. You know, where are we going? Just hold on. Now, my, my wife's like that. You know, where are we going? I'll show you because I want to try to do something surprise. Just sit over there and be quiet. So where are we going? I'm trying to surprise. Okay, I wanted to surprise you. I'm taking you somewhere. Is that okay now? Yeah, I'm happy now. I wanted to know. But see, in the walk of faith, you can't live that way. And you, it takes faith for ministers to stand up and God start going a different direction and go, now I'm going to be honest with you. I love the flow of the whole, I love it when we just, just start ministering to people that way. But when he starts telling me to get a different scripture and, and I have no idea where he's going with it, that's a little, that, that, one's, that one's tough. Because you have nowhere I, you have, I mean, you go, okay, I read the scripture and you just step right out over the nothing. Because you had no idea where you're heading. Amen. But understand this. When God begins to lead us, well, every time he does, but when he leads us and, and, and changes things on us, don't freak out. Don't get uptight. Just go along for the ride. Why? Because I can guarantee you this. Every good and every perfect gift 
cometh down from the Father above, in whom there is no variableness nor shadow of turning. It's going to be good. I said it's going to be good. Even if you encounter some hardships along the way, it's going to be good. Now listen, just because God, with God's leading, don't mean you won't ever have any hardships. Remember uh, Paul? He was on his way, and uh, he was on his way to preach. Uh, I believe in Asia. I can't, uh, you know. And uh, he, he uh, was on his way, just I mean bulldogging it. Here comes Paul. Boom. And then and God forbade him in the spirit to go there. So he had to start again. And then. He saw in a dream, I believe, a man over in Macedonia saying, come unto us. He went over there, and that's when he got beat and thrown into prison. Now, you know, you know Barnabas leaped and reached over there and started saying, hey, Paul, next time we travel, no pizza. These pizza dreams got us in trouble, you know, indigestion dreams. You ever had one of those? Thought, you, thought you'd heard from God, and it was just the pizza talking. Yeah. I, I told one lady one time on the phone. Because she called me up and said, can I talk to the pastor? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the pastor. I got a question for you. I got this man that, that the Lord has shown me I'm, I'm going to marry. Okay. Well, have you gone to your pastor? I can't go to my pastor. Then you may as well get outside and put a red flag in front of a bull. You know something's wrong with that picture. You can't go. Why can't you go to your pastor? Well, you know, he's one of the elders in the church. Okay. And I kept, I kept questioning. You know, what I got, you know what I found out after questioning her for about 10 minutes? Because she wanted me to bless her pursuit of this man. She wanted me to give her a word on pursuing this man. And finally, she broke down and told me, that, as the old saying is, let the cat out of the bag. Well, he's married. And before I knew it, it came out of my mouth. Sister, that wasn't God. You ate too much pizza last night. And she wasn't happy about it. I said, God, don't show you going to marry somebody else's husband, uh, somebody else's husband, and he's married to them. God ain't going to do that. That's not God. That was, the, that was just you eating too much pizza. And then you call me up to get me to bless it. You can't go to your pastor. That, that's a telltale sign right there. Because you probably, you know, some, some churches, they take it right in front of the church and expose them in front of the whole congregation. Now, I, don't, I don't believe we do that. We try to restore people. Hallelujah. But no, Barnabas is going, Paul, you had pizza. What, 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 what was on that pizza? Was there pork on that pizza, Paul? <laughs> huh? Well, Paul, that's when Paul preached a sermon to him on, on the fact that we were, you know, what God's cleansed. And, you know, he, he took Peter's vision and relayed that, you know, we've been cleansed. We're not under the law. Hallelujah. Amen. But something's going on. But you know what happened? At midnight, they prayed and sang praises. And the, and the jail shook, and all the doors opened up, and the guard came in, and he's about to kill himself. The keeper of the prison was about to kill himself, and then Paul says, do yourself no harm, we're all here. Wow, they got so busy praising God, they, the doors were open, but see, they were free before the doors opened. So when the doors opened, they didn't get up and run out, well, I'm free. They were already free. Now, what happens after that? Well, um, the jailer takes him home. His whole house gets saved. And historically, the, 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 uh, the belief is that he became the pastor of that local church in Ephesus. And Ephesus became part of the epicenter of Paul's missions trips. Remember, we did that, that teaching for two years on the life, and the, the, the life and teachings of Paul. And he was in and out of Ephesus all the time. Now, it didn't look good when they obeyed God. Oh, they got whipped. But then God took that event and that leading, and out of that place, they reached all of Asia Minor. They were, they were just always going through Ephesus and preaching and doing things out of that area. Hallelujah. Now, I know the, the letter to the Ephesians is a circular letter, but the copy we have is out of Ephesus. And it's a strong letter. As a matter of fact, you want to know who you are in Christ and what you have in Christ and what God wants you to do in Christ? Ephesians. Divide it in half. First three chapters, what you have in Christ. Chap the last three chapters, how we implement that into our daily life. It's, an, it's a powerful book. All because the Holy Ghost led him. And they didn't freak out when he encountered a tough time. So 
If you listen, don't freak out when you're you're believing God and things go a little contrary to what you think. Or go big contrary to what you think. Don't get uptight. I said, don't get uptight. Just keep your eye on the prize. Keep following the Holy Ghost. Keep they that are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. I'm quoting scripture, I'm just not quoting the ones from my notes. Because what I have for my notes is Psalm 91, it won't fit. So we're going to be delayed another week getting to the authority of the believer. But ah, that's all right. Amen. So when we, when we learn to flow, and I'm going to tell you, uh, we, we've been kind of shut down a little bit. You know, we're moving out of the building and into this, the, to, this, uh, to the community center. Um, we, we're kind of inhibited a little bit uh, flowing in the spirit because I don't think we kind of knew. Everybody's kind of like filling it out. But I don't know if you've noticed, there's been an increase of the anointing. Wednesday nights, we've been preaching. We've been preaching some. I've been, I've been preaching. Been having some, you know, almost. When you hadn't done certain things in a long time, like Dad Hagen said, you know, it might take a little while to get back into it. When he started having Holy Ghost meetings, he said, it's going to take me a few, few of these meetings to get back to our flow. That's back in the 90s when he had uh, been teaching for all those years. But the Lord said, if you don't teach this, these people to move with the Spirit, it'd be lost to a whole other generation. And so he started having Holy Ghost meetings, manifestations of the Spirit, demonstrations of the Holy Ghost. And he said, it's going to take me a few, few of these meetings to get back into that flow. And it does. And see, we hadn't, we hadn't had a preaching flow for, for, a, few, for a season, and, uh, but we're starting to get back into it. Wednesday nights, I mean, you can come back. Don't, don't you stay on Wednesday night. Uh, we, you got some good stuff going on Wednesday nights. And some good work coming out. Isn't that right? Those who have been coming Wednesday night. Hallelujah. I haven't been coming Wednesday night. I can't say anything. Show up. It's, now, listen, it's an hour. We, we got to be out here at 8 o'clock. So we, we go 7 to 8. Boom. We're done. Amen. Sing two songs, preach. I mean, it's quick. There's no, there's no, there's no fluff and puff. It's get after it. Amen. And we don't break, we don't set all this up, so we don't have to break it all down. You can just come walking in, get ministry, and walk right back out. Hallelujah. The only thing we bring in is two music stands. Nathan and Dick walk on their own. Hallelujah, Father. Continue to oh. I want you to begin to pray during the week about manifestations of the Spirit. More manifestations in our services. More demonstrations in our services. More liberty. So you've got to come in. You've got to come with liberty. Our, 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 the congregation has got to come. So you can't expect Pastor Ed to get it all the time. And this morning there was, was, was a special manifestation, a special anointing. He moved in a special way. But Wigglesworth used to say, if the Spirit don't move me, I move the Spirit. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We get, just get over into the Spirit, praise God. Get in the movement. Amen. I know, I know, I know. I know there are places to go, places to, places to, to function in the anointing. Places for, listen, okay, <laughs> So many places I want to go right this second, I can't. No, I can't. Dear Lord, hallelujah. January, we moved out of our other building. January 10th was our last service in the building. For three weeks, we went to Winston. We had no, we had no place to meet. February, the free, first Sunday of February, we met here. And one of the things we said when we moved out, and we were kind of in limbo and weren't really sure exactly where we were going to land and all those kind of things. Um, and there's no fault of our own. We weren't behind. We were, we were, we were, um, we were on time with our, our lease, and we were fine with our lease. The owner did not want us there anymore. Which is, you know, which I'm, I'm honestly, I mean, we could get upset with him, but I believe God was moving us out. We would have never, we would have never moved out. Unless I got kicked right in the seat of the pants, we wouldn't have moved out. And, and I'm going to be honest with you. When we start tearing it all down and moving it all out, I know why I wouldn't have moved out. It was, I mean, we got two storage units, a 10 by 30 and a 10 by 40, from one end to the other, ceiling, floor to ceiling, stacked with church stuff. Sound systems, chairs, I mean all kinds of stuff. Would have, huh? 
Bill's bedroom. <laughs> and our garage. Garage wouldn't be so bad if my girls who came back from Tulsa would get their stuff out of my garage. Anyway. But when we, one of the things we said was this. We're going to take some time and, and um, rest and recover. While the congregation was burnt out. We've been doing stuff for years and people doing stuff for years. And we're, just going to, we're going to say, let's just sit back. Let's recover. Let's catch our breath. Okay? Let's, let's just come to church and get ministered to. Not a lot of, you know, expectations. I mean, you know, Dick, Dick and... Um, um, and Nathan, uh, we didn't even have, we had guitar worship for some time. No, no equipment until we bought the equipment. And, it was, and of course, they, look, they probably look back and go, wow, that was easy. You know, this is pretty easy considering. But let me say this. See, now the cloud's moving. He, he came and he sat. And he let us get ministered to. And he let us get refreshed. And he let us get our wind back in ourselves. And now the cloud's moving. Not necessarily the building, but moving to being back active at what we are called to do. And this is coming by the Spirit. I had no intention of saying a thing along this lines. Wasn't even thinking about it. But it is time now for us to get, or as the old country song, back in the saddle again. I mean, yeah, there we go. Thank you, Nathan. Okay. Okay. Slap your no, 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 you don't even bother. She used to spank Nathan. <laughs> and he would scream like you broke his leg. <laughs> yeah, Shannon, if Shannon would put it on him, buddy. <laughs> and now, we have fun at our dinner table, but before you're ever wondering. It's time for us to get, get after the things of God again as a church. Okay? One of the things is, in the month of September, we're going to be having a, a community car wash. Now, it was supposed to be the second week. I think we may have to move it because we just haven't been able to get some things coordinated with people we need to get them coordinated with. But we're going to ask all y'all to come out on Saturday for about three hours. We're going to do it right here. The, the community center will let us do it as long as we're not doing it for donations or trying to, trying to raise funds. So we're going to do it for free. They're going to let us use the order. We'll, uh, Jeff's got some equipment. We got, we're going to set up some tents. And we're going to wash people's cars for free and just let them know about the church. Okay? We're going to have our fall campaigns at the, at the Salvation Army and, and reach out to the homeless. But what we're going to do is we're going to get back after it, reaching people, inviting people to church, ministering to people, doing what we're called to do. In other words, rest time is over. It's, back, it's the time to get back after it, all right? And I'm sensing that the Spirit of God's moving already in preparation for that. The anointing has become different. The more the preaching anointing, you know, we're starting to see manifestations of the Spirit in our services uh, where we were just kind of sitting and, and, being, and just sitting and actually getting ministered to by the Word to strengthen us again. Amen? So, in honesty... I think only one person that, that regularly came to the church in the other building had stopped coming. Everybody else kept coming. Now, maybe not all the time, but they still kept coming. That's not bad when you move a location and you have one person stop. And they didn't come regularly anyway. So they weren't regular before and they weren't regular afterwards. So, amen. But we're going to get back after it. Amen. Some people are coming back. We know that we knew that. God's told, me, God's told me in the past couple of years there'll be people who return. They've, they've been gone. Amen. Well, they're going to come back and they're going to stay. Amen. Because, because that, that was God's plan anyway. New people coming. We've actually grown since we've been over here more than we were growing than before we left over the building. But the, the cloud's moving and God's calling us to step up to the plate. Now, Jeff's coordinating the, um, the uh, car wash deal. Uh, he's already got permission from the community center. We just got to give him a, an actual date, and you know, we got to get some supplies. I mean, wash cars, you got to have stuff to wash them with, like soap. <laughs> you know, and we got to have, you know, car vacs out here to vacuum. But it's, it's not going to be your a detail job. It's just Sandy's body shop is a hit and miss. 
You know, you go in there, you, you vacuum it up, you wash it. If they're happy, got a free car wash. It doesn't look, you know, it's not, it's not buffed and polished and all that. But they're happy. So you're going to have to be with us. Other thing, we need more people on Sunday mornings to set up. Now, this morning, I, I came and helped out because we didn't have Winston this morning. Um, and so, you know, we, we, three of us, four of us got it all in here and got it going. But, you know, what? it would be really nice to have more people in here so they could get it set up quicker so that they could get to the worship quicker. And it's going to be good to have people in the building when people show up. When visitors show up or new people show up, somebody comes looking, we got people standing out there welcoming them. So what? it's time to get back in the saddle. We're going to get after it. So I'm, I'm asking you, you know, to recognize what God's doing and let's go for it. Oh, yeah. Amen. Amen. Why? Because we have a purpose. What, what, what the Spirit of God manifests this morning is not available in every church. And I'm not condemning anybody. And I'm not putting them down. But there are people who will never get anything from God unless they can find the anointing. Because they haven't been taught. They don't know how. And they, and they need to be in the, manifest, the presence of the manifest anointing to get things from God that they can learn. So, and then they'll move them to learn. Move them to learn. And we, we teach the Word. We flow in the Spirit. That's, our, that's what we believe. That's what we do. But there are people in this town who will never, ever, ever, they'll go to some churches, they'll tell them God did that to you for a reason. And won't ever be able to believe God because they, they've been robbed of their faith to believe God. I know this. If you can get the people with the Word and the anointing, you can get to them. I've seen people take things that they go to churches don't believe nothing. I mean, don't believe nothing. Don't even believe that Jesus, you know, there, there's a devil. Poor Jesus. He didn't know there was no devil. He was tempted of him for 40 days. You know? Yeah. He didn't, he, they don't even believe there's a devil. I've taught, I've ministered to people, given them the word, prayed for them by the Holy Ghost. And had seen them receive things. They don't always come. They don't, don't come to our church. I don't care. I'm not here to get them in my church. I'm here to manage to get Jesus to them. And then they can go from there. Amen. That's my job is to get Jesus to them. To, to man, minister Jesus and to man, have manifest presence of him through me to them. And then let, let, let them go from there. But we've seen their kids get healed from cancer. Because we got the information to them they needed to get. Hallelujah. See them recover from ruptured appendix. When other everybody's coming in talking about the will of the Lord, we're praying that God's will be done. I'm coming in praying that they're healed, no, no this, no that. They're going to be whole in Jesus' name. And they go, wow. Wow. They're, they're going, wow. All I can say is, Wow. Because the anointing hit them. Some people, never, some people have never come in contact with the anointing. Wouldn't know if it came in with a red hat and a pink feather on. He wouldn't, but anyway. So we're, getting, we're back in the saddle, amen? We're going for it. I, I know it's not my sermon, but we, I just, the way the Spirit moved, I wanted to, and, and I wanted to share some things. We always honor and recognize the Lord, and then we hold fast. To the things God gives us with praise and thanksgiving. We magnify his holy name. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. We trust that you were blessed by the word of God and the flow of the spirit of God in this service. If you would like to contact us, please write us via email at office at fbc.org or using our mailing address P.O. Box 7752, Greensboro, North Carolina, 27417. If you would like to contribute to our ministry, please go to our website at www.fbc.org and click on the Giving Online button. Thank you, and may God richly bless you for your giving.